I mean, really, really, but this is this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing now. Hello, my doves. What's up? What's up? Welcome back to Afternoon by Olympia. Today's video is going to be a foundation wear test. We are having a look at the Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharge Micellar Foundation in the shade D170. D170. We are also going to try out the powder, the Change Maker Flexible Coverage Press Powder in the shade Deep 2. So if you are interested in any of these products, I suggest you keep watching. Hello my doves, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Olympia and I do videos here on YouTube about beauty and makeup available in Australia for deeper skin tones. We're going to do it. We're going to do a foundation wear test. I haven't done one in a hot minute. I think it's because a lot of the foundations that are currently on the market haven't really intrigued me enough. But Bite Beauty, I mean, they're trying to do the whole clean, clean makeup and all that kind of stuff. So this Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation in the shade D170. I'm gonna give you all the details. So basically this foundation is available at Sephora or sephora.com.au. It is 30 mils in total and retails for 57 Australian dollars. It comes in 32 shades. The shade I have, which is deep 70, is described as deep with neutral golden undertones. That is me. Neutral golden, well, sometimes I'm olive golden, but neutral can be like can work sometimes because the olive side is considered neutral does that make sense so i'm interested to see what we get with this foundation i will also add that it's described as a clean long wearing foundation with a gentle micellar technology that mimics skin texture for a natural flawless finish i don't know what that means <laughs> So the best way to apply it is to dot foundation onto your cheeks, forehead and nose. For best results, use your fingers or a brush. Start from the center of the face and blend outward. Build coverage with fingers on places that need it. So interesting. So I'm going to I am going to do a sponge and I am going to do a um, foundation brush. I prefer brushes these days, but I have on occasion been using sponges. So I'm going to zoom you guys in a little bit further and we're going to get into this foundation. Alright, so I've already prepped my skin. I'm using the, the Ink Key List Hemp Moisturizer. Um, kind of on my cheeks in the T-zone, I'm using Counterbalance Oil Control Hydrate. I'm using that in my T-zone. And this wouldn't be a foundation wear test if I didn't use my usual primer. This is the Toucher Silk Canvas. I am back on this. I did get the e.l.f. one and I'm just waiting for it to arrive, essentially. I um, want to compare the two. I know there's like heaps of videos comparing. I want to see because I love the silk canvas so much. I guess I am using Tati's sponge, Blenderful, whatever it's called. Don't like to use it for powder, just a little bit of an update. Should have seen this video by now. I've filmed some videos and I'm not sure what order we're going to be going in. So, uh, yeah, bear with me. All right. Good shake. I'm not sure of the shade. I haven't, I didn't buy any other shades. So, let's hoping this actually works well it is my shade okay first off the bat it's quite it's quite thick like it's i don't know if i'm using too much but it feels like really really thick can i help you michael you're thick thanks <laughs> um okay we're gonna go in with a brush first Thank you. 
it has a smell. It smells floral. Why is she so thick though? Well, I would say that's medium to full, if not full coverage, because I can't see any of my acne scarring whatsoever. I reckon that's full coverage. Sorry, I keep looking this way. I'm looking at the monitor <laughs> to see what you guys are seeing. I do apologize. Um, but what do you reckon? Okay, I like it with a brush. I don't know, my, my skin looks so textured though. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Doesn't dry down, still it requires powder. So there's that. And we're gonna use a sponge on this side. Okay guys, Sonia Kushak sponge. Okay, that's the sponge side definitely like the sponge side better I just feel like it's not grabbing onto my texture as much I don't know if you guys can see a difference with that or not I mean this side does have more texture than this side so it's hard to tell but I don't know I just feel like it's it's a weird one Okay, I'm just going to perfect this side as well. Just so that it looks all even. Yeah, I will pop up, pop up on the screen here for you guys my current foundation shades in a variety of foundations. Um, please note that I have updated it. I have removed some of, um, some of the ones that I no longer use. Um, most because I've decluttered it. There will be some declutters coming soon, by the way. Um, I've decluttered my foundations um, and I've basically gotten rid of some that I don't use so there's no point having them in that list if that makes sense okay guys so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly do a pan for you guys and then we're gonna note the time and we'll start the wear test and then we'll move into the powder so stay tuned all that I would have when I flipped it in a double oh, oh. Say time again, we gotta go, go Take one, then I dash away from pole, pole. Okay guys, I have concealer on. I am wearing the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade Dark 46, which is a little bright, I know, but I wanted to counteract some of that orangeness that I was finding in the foundation. So um, normally I do wear a Dark 48, which is just a tad bit darker, but it is a little bit more golden and it was just a lot of golden going on. This one's a little bit more new. This one's comparable to the NARS Radiant Premier Concealer in the shade Caramel. It's very similar to that one. So it's a little bit, a little bit light, but like I said, there's a reason for it. I wanted to kind of balance everything out a little bit. And I've just blended everything together with my blender full. Just to make sure everything looks seamless. Okay, so let's have a look at the Bite Beauty Change Maker Flexible Coverage Pressed Powder. I have it in the darkest shade, which is Deep 2. And um, this is the darkest shade. 
I mean, really, really, but this is this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing now. I mean, look how dark this is. This is not even the deepest shade. There's still like, um, let me check. So there's three. There's still three deep deeper shades after my shade that I'm wearing currently, and this is the darkest powder. If this is supposed to be the pressed powder that's supposed to set all over the face, like I don't even. Who who is this? setting like I, i'm i'm really quite confused there are only eight powders as well retails for 52 australian dollars so i'm 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 really annoyed i'm really 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 annoyed with how light that is i don't know i'm gonna try it all over my face first just in case it is too dark for the under eye but i'm really doubting that i think it's gonna be i think it's uh, mm -hmm. yes okay Alrighty, i'm going to press into this powder okay it's definitely made it lighter compared to that side can you guys see Well, I have to do this side to like even it out. I don't know. I just I'm a bit annoyed. It set it. It's set. It's just that it's my face looks really really quite light now. All right, let's try it in the under eye area. Okay, so it's perfect for the under eye if you are my complexion, but it's too light for the rest of your face. So I definitely wouldn't be using this all over your face. I did today, it has kind of lightened everything up. So there's definitely some coverage with this. Definitely some coverage. Oh, my little Tamagotchi's got a nail. Oh yeah, I found my Tamagotchi in the mail, like in the mail, in um, like some old boxes. And now I'm kind of obsessed with it. Tell me if you remember Tamagotchis. Tamagotchis are the best. So honestly, I really like how my face is looking. It doesn't look overly cakey or weird. I've lost some of my um, foundation, uh, foundation, my, um, eyeshadow so I will ooh, throw things in the ground okay I will put some of that back in a moment but can we just have a look at my face right now it's actually not that bad that powder that powder gives a beautiful finish I do feel like I look airbrushed though that powder is too um, light for everywhere else I'm not mad at it if I have a foundation that I find is just that tad bit too dark, this will come in handy, with, like in that situation. But I do wish this was not the deeper shade, deep two. I wish they had something deeper. Um, by the way, deep two is neutral golden undertones. So it matches my foundation in that it's also neutral golden. But yeah, it's definitely it's definitely not deep enough. Only eight shades. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Okay, no, it does not. Uh, let me quickly just fix up this uh, about uh, this eyeshadow, and we can move on to the wear test. Yeah. Keep a 40, they don't know, no Got the Henny, you get Coco Smoke on Reggie, that's a no-no Driving slow-mo in the photo Bitch, it's ready I have gone a little bit longer than four hours It's been about four and a half hours We started at, what was that, 11... 11 o'clock or 11 30, something like that anyway so this is what my face is currently looking like you can see that i do have oils coming through the nose from what i can see 
I don't know if I like this foundation. I don't know if it's because my skin is just so bad at the moment, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's looking really, really rough. Um, it's going to be interesting how it looks like in four hours when I powder down and see what it's like. But as it stands right now, it's not, it's not on my, um, it's not on my radar. But we don't know. We don't know how it's going to be. It might look really flick, you know, look really good once it's powdered down. I will say that this powder though is not really helping much. Normally I get a lot more oil control, but we shall see. All right, guys, I will see you at the next check-in and we'll have my final thoughts. We'll do a final review. Okay, see you soon. Photos. I say all the things on my mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stacking money like three, six, five. Cause the shit is real. Oh, Cause the shit is real. Oh, Cause the shit is real. School, school. Okay, guys, welcome back. We have made it to eight hours. And this is currently what my face is looking like. Um, it's not bad. It's it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, so let's go through the review portion of this foundation wear test. We're going to look at oil control. So with my oil control test, I take a Chasse Du blotting sheet and I'm going to blot. Now, to determine oil control comparing to other foundations, it depends on how many sheets I require to blot my whole face. So one sheet is considered really, really good oil control. Two sheets, two to three sheets is considered not so good. And anything more than three sheet sheets is really bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and blot my nose and just kind of my T-zone area. So I've blotted and as you can see that's what it's looking like and this is what how much oil I got one sheet but if I flip it over you guys will see how much transfer there was and there's a lot of transfer so it technically it failed the transfer test because that's a lot of pigment that's a lot of color coming off in the sheet. I have other foundations that don't do this. Um, and considering in terms of how many sheets I needed to use to blot my face, one is really quite good, but if I'm getting down to the wire of it all with other foundations that have one, there's still quite a lot on this sheet as well. So I'm, mm, I'm not overly impressed with the oil control. I feel like if I didn't prep my skin properly, this would be a lot worse. But having you know shown you guys what kind of oil control it does have, there is some. But if you're super oily, I'm only oily combo skin. But if you're like oily skin, I don't believe this foundation is going to be for you. I do not think it is going to hold up to um, preventing your oils from coming through. It's going to break down a lot quicker. I'm just saying. Okay, so that's oil control. Let's look at performance now. So how did this foundation apply? I applied it with this side was the brush side and this side was the sponge. I prefer the sponge side. I mean, I can't really, it's a bit hard for me to tell. I might have to use this foundation a couple more times in that my skin is really, really bad at the moment. So it looks worse on this side. But if I look at areas that look quite good i feel like this foundation even though i applied it i prefer the the sponge side it's not i don't know it's not that great it's so thick um that using a sponge 
I feel is you know it's not gonna soak up as much um, product the sponge sorry the brush I feel left it looking gritty like it wasn't worked into the skin properly whereas with the sponge with the pouncing action I was able to really work it into the skin a lot better I just feel like it looks better on this side in general I did fix it up a little bit with the sponge like later on like as you guys would have seen earlier but um, from what I could recall from what I can recall the sponge side was definitely um, a better option in my opinion so if you guys remember we did use the powder the powder hmm the powder was mostly on the under eye and I did use it all over the face and I found that the oil control was pretty good on the face it did definitely set it did require setting spray no doubt I used the glow the Re glow recipe um, watermelon spray but then I went in with some Huda Beauty resting boss face um, setting spray um, and I found that in combination with those two the f um, foundation was really able to set it does not set on its own you have to use something to set it down if you've got dry skin um, and you generally never set your foundation with powders and things like that this one it stayed quite tacky for a while even like 15 minutes and it was still still wet um, and the smell the, the floral scent that I could feel coming through like I could smell coming through it was there throughout I only pulled it just it after about half an hour so the smell is there it's not strong but it is noticeable so once again if you have scent issues um, and you get migraines and smells you may want to stay away from this foundation it definitely felt lightweight on the skin which is interesting because it was so heavy like it felt like the actual formula itself was so like whipped and creamy and quite um, thick but on application it didn't feel like there was anything on my skin whatsoever like it felt like nothing like I didn't feel like there was anything on my face basically which is what I prefer I hate the feeling of makeup on my face did it oxidize or did it say true to color I believe it said true to color it did get lighter with the powder but that was the powder itself not the foundation so it definitely did not oxidize I did definitely didn't see it getting any deeper um, throughout the day and um, the shade itself was quite orange which is why I used a more neutral concealer to balance out that orange it was it was quite orange I know it's supposed to be neutral golden um, I don't know what I was expecting but it's the closest shade I feel to me I feel like the other shades don't didn't quite weren't quite it but this one look I can get away with it it works fine on me um, and I'm not hating the shade to be honest can we see any fading lift increasing so I'm just gonna have a closer look it's a little bit of lifting around my nose especially after I blotted this whole area here is a little bit sparse as you can see my skin is not great at the moment I don't see it lifting anywhere else I've changed my lipstick because this is a different lipstick and it hasn't really lifted around my nose it hasn't settled into fine lines it's been more than eight hours guys um, and I don't see it settling into lines at all I just see the thing is with these wear tests I normally if I wasn't doing wear tests I would blot as per usual but for whatever reason, if you didn't have a chance to blot, I want, I want to show you guys how the foundation actually wears, wears. So apart from this area here and here, mostly after blotting, no, it's still in the crevices of my nose. Like it hasn't lifted, it's separated maybe a tiny bit, but it's still, It's still looking really, really good. I'm really surprised. Like, yeah. Okay. I don't know what to make of this foundation. 
I'm really, I really don't. Now, is it necessarily worth the price? 57 Australian dollars. I don't think it's worth 57 Australian dollars. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's in a squeezy tube, which is cheap as heck. This is like a plastic tube. I mean, I know this is probably biodegradable if they're trying to be clean. It doesn't say anywhere that it is. And it's currently, it says it's made in Italy. I don't know. I just feel like a glass reusable bottle would be better. I don't know. I just feel like for $57, that's a lot of money. Um, and I do not think this foundation justifies the price. I mean, I could add what, 10, 15 bucks to that and get like on the size of Beverly Hills shade, like, that foundation's really good. But yeah, so I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced, I'm not convinced. So, after taking consideration, transfer, oil control, lifting, fading, how it wore after eight hours, I'm going to give this foundation a score. I'm gonna give it a B, B plus. It's definitely not up there in terms of my A, like my A plus foundations. Um, and I think the reason behind that is because I don't know my skin looks so textured at the moment And I honestly can't say whether it's my skin or if it's the foundation I feel like I might have to wait for a good skin day and like bust this out and try it again But as it stands now, I don't feel like it's enhancing my skin whatsoever. The, the shade is orange So it's not you know my ideal shade um, and the finish I would say is just natural finish. It's not dewy, it's not matte, it's not either. It's just kind of somewhere in the middle, kind of skin-like. Um, but I'm not mad at it though. Like it's not like I hate it or anything like that, but at the same time, I'm not super excited about it. Um, yeah, so yeah, B, I'm gonna give it a B. It's a B, it's a B to me. I would suggest if you wanna try this once this COVID stuff settles down and we are let out of our homes um, and the shopping malls are open, I would just get a sample little pot and try that enough with like two or three wares in it um, and give that a go because I feel like this is gonna be quite a polarizing foundation. I do know, I did watch some reviews um, and honestly it was split 50-50 in terms of people who loved and people who who hate it it's very love or hate in terms of um this foundation okay listen i am done i'm done we, we have come to the end of this wear test and uh I, i'm kind of i'm kind of done my eyeshadow is like sorry everywhere it's just not sticking down It is what it is. That's what it is. Okay, I'm done, guys. I will see you all on my next video. Stay safe, look after one another, and I will see you on the next video. Take care, my doves. Bye.